A very very warm welcome to yet another Kumekucha video. Information and analysis that is very difficult to find anywhere else. I recommend that you subscribe and you hit the bell button so that you receive notifications every time I have a new video. Karibu sana and enjoy. Welcome to the last video in this series. Now we're going to keep it very simple so that everybody understands. What is compound interest? Simply put, compound interest is where you earn an interest and you don't withdraw your money. You don't withdraw your investment. What you do is that you take the interest and put it back in the principal, you know, the sum you started with. Yeah, and then you repeat whatever investment you are doing. For example, you have 100 shillings and a bank is prepared to pay you 20% interest. So you put in the 100 shillings, you wait until the end of the month. This is just a hypothetical example. No bank pays you that kind of interest. Yeah, But bear with me, this is just an example to clarify to make sure that uh, we all understand what it is. So you put in your 100 shillings at the end of the month, the bank pays you 120 shillings. That is your 100 shillings plus 20% interest. And instead of taking out your 20 shillings, you take your 120 shillings, take it back again to the bank. Yeah. And at the end of the month, they will pay you 120 shillings plus the interest on it, which should be 144, 144 shillings. Now, compound interest is the secret of investing successfully. That is so important, I have to repeat it. Compound interest is the real secret behind successful investing. If you don't understand it, if you don't understand its power, your chances of success are limited. Now on your screens right now is a graph yeah, which illustrates the power of compound interest. Okay? Don't worry if you don't understand it because I appreciate not all of us <laughs> may be able to understand what a graph means. Don't worry because I'm going to illustrate this practically. And we will do this by transferring the principle of compound interest into a business, a very practical business. And we will use 100 shillings. Now, this may shock some of you so much that you might think I'm lying, that I'm fiddling with the figures. So you're very welcome yeah, to go, after you finish taking in this video, to go and sit down with a pen and paper and actually do the calculation yourself again. Now, if you had 100 shillings, only 100 shillings, and you discovered something that you could do that would always give you a 50% profit, that means you put in 100 and you get out 150. You put in 150, you get out 225. If you had that kind of idea and you did not take out your profit and you put it back into the same operation, and you did this every week. Yeah, every week you just did it once. Yeah, so you start week one, the 100 shillings. You do whatever you do. You end up with 150. You keep it aside and you wait for next week. And then you repeat. If you did this very simple exercise, yeah, within 23 weeks, yeah, 23 weeks, that's about five months and three weeks. Within five months and three weeks, your 100 shillings will be, wait for this one, your 100 shillings will be 1,122,274 shillings. Oh yes, and so if uh, you could find an investment that you can make once a week for 50% uh, profit, at the end of six months, you will not have turned your 100 shillings into 100,000, yeah, as I've been advertising on this video since we started, you'll in fact have turned it into 1,122,274. That is the power of compounded interest or compound interest. And this is the reason, yeah, if you want to understand, this is the reason why banks make so much profits. Now, there's something else very important I want you to take careful note of here. Time is very important. Because, for instance, if you did this uh, investment, 
yeah, once a month. Instead of once a week, it would take you 23 months. Yeah, that's almost two years. And if on the other end of the scale, you did it once a day, instead of once a week or once a month, you did it daily. Yeah, every day you took your money, starting with 100 shillings, and did something that would give you 50% profit. And you made sure every day you don't take a single shilling, a single penny from it. Yeah. All the money you make, you put it right back. You don't even buy water. <laughs> if you did that daily, it would take you only 23 days. Yeah, 23 days only to have in your hands 1,122,274 shillings. Wah, 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 wah. The power, the enormous power of compound interest. Now I hope I've gotten you very excited, yeah, because excitement is very important. Being excited is very powerful motivation. The kind of motivation that will keep you going, yeah, even when your investment starts off on a bad note, yeah, you start and you don't quite succeed, it'll keep you motivated to keep going. It will also keep you motivated when you have about a hundred thousand shillings on you, money you've never handled since you were born. It will be enough motivation to keep you going so that you'll not be tempted to take out 20 shillings or 30 shillings from that hundred thousand to buy a bottle of water. Because you're thirsty, yeah, you'll be motivated enough not to do that and to keep going. Now I want to excite you further. Remember the first idea I gave you yeah, of vertical sack farming? Now this one should be able to motivate you even if you're not interested in farming ideas. Out of all the ideas I gave you, the vertical sack farming were able to prove, or rather I, I have been able to prove, a hundred shillings will give you a return of not less than 500 shillings on your first harvest. Now remember, with spinach, you can harvest daily. But for practical purposes, let us say you harvest weekly. Yeah, that gives the leaves enough time to regrow. So that you can be able to harvest almost the same, if not the same, quantity you harvested last week. And again, I challenge you to do your own calculations. Yeah, after you take in this video, go and sit down with a pen and paper and do your calculations to prove me right. So if you started with 100 shillings, and every time you sold your produce, you reinvested everything right back to the business. At the end of the 10th month, month 10, yeah, that's less than a year. At the end of month 10, you would have, you'd better sit down for this one. <laughs> At the end of month 10, you would have 1,244,000 Kenya shillings or 12,440 US dollars. The power of compound interest. Now that you've gotten very excited, let's come back down to earth. Let's face reality. This is very hard work. It's very hard back-breaking work. Most people don't like to work hard. However, I hope you're motivated enough now to change and start working hard. Number two, you're going to meet many obstacles and many challenges. But if you overcome all of them, you'll be able to meet your objective. However, let's remain as realistic as possible. Say because you're very inexperienced, you're doing this for the first time, the obstacles overcome you. Yeah, the challenges and the problems that face you you're not able to solve all of them. And so at the end of 10 months, instead of earning 1 million and something, instead of having 1 million and something in your hands, you only end up with half that amount, or even less, say 400,000. Are you going to cry and say, Chris is a liar, this thing doesn't work? Well, that is up to you. The other thing that is bound to happen is that the, as the amounts of money reach the kinds of amounts you have never before handled in your life, you will need a lot of self-discipline to stick to your plan. 
others may say to themselves, Ah, I've never had this kind of money. Let me go out and spend all of it on a holiday, then I'll come back and start all over again. No problem, it will work. I urge you and I beg you not to succumb to that temptation. Because life is such that as you go along, as you progress, yeah, things get easier. Yeah, so why do you want to make life hard for yourself, starting all over again from scratch? What you simply need to do, if you are very tempted and if you must, is to take out only a fraction of what you have, so that when you come back, you don't have to start from scratch. You will have taken yourself a bit behind, but you can start at a higher point than from scratch, than going right back to the beginning. Now, what I highly recommend, even in your excitement, is that when you finish watching this series of videos, yeah, these six videos, go back right at the beginning to the first video and watch all of them again. Maybe this time taking notes. So that you fully understand and you grasp what you're doing. Now, I have a few things to mention before I go. This video has been about investing. And that is why I have not talked about savings. And I have not talked about business. Yeah, or rather I've said very little about those two. Now from this successful investment project of yours, you can launch a business. Yeah, because you already have something which is working. You can register a company. Launch a business, a fully fledged business. Invest in a bigger space, etc, etc. And you have a fully fledged ongoing business. This is the way to go into business. Start by investing. Yeah, and when you have a successful investment that you have done many times, that you've gained experience from, then launching a business is only natural. The advantage of having a business is that you can start paying yourself a salary. Now on to savings. Now as I said before, you should not touch your savings. However, if we are to be realistic, as your investment grows bigger, you will have less and less time to do anything else. And so chances are high that your other source of income will vanish, disappear, as you focus all your attention on your investment. When this happens, it means that you'll be forced to turn your investment into a business, yeah, so that you can pay yourself a salary, and so that you can have the funds to feed your savings, to keep your savings growing. Because that is very important. Because remember, your investment is still a risk. Anything can happen. It could vanish tomorrow. Along with all your money. So it's very important that you keep your savings growing all the time. Even as your investments grow. Or rather even as your business grows. Now the very last thing I want to say. Is that the idea I've given you. Vertical sack farming. Or any other idea you might decide to take on. Yeah, as an investment will require marketing skills, yeah, your ability to sell. Now the advantage with uh, doing spinach is that there's a ready market. It is fairly easy to sell food and especially farm produce. However, the truth is you will still need marketing skills, marketing ideas. Now I would like to recommend an ebook I have. It's titled How to Get Plenty of Customers Right Away. You can see all the information on this on your screens right now. Now I have a package where you can get both this ebook and the other ebook, 101 Brilliant Business Ideas. You can get both of them yeah, by simply purchasing this one on marketing and you get the other one free. All you need to do is send a blank email to the email address you see on your screens right now. This ebook has helped very many people. Yeah, because selling and marketing is the same, whether you're selling spinach or you're selling an aircraft. It's exactly the same, or a car. It's exactly the same. The basic principles are the same. They apply to all of them. Of course, in different ways, but they apply to all of them. And therefore, the ideas in this ebook can be applied to any business under the sun. I will be very delighted to hear about your progress. Yeah, so feel free to shoot me an email, yeah, tell me how you're doing. Even if you're facing frustrations, I'll be happy to hear about them and to offer my help where I can. 
Just remember, I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for a better Kenya. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.